Patriot Tribal Peace in the Patriot League studio, joined now by 2017 Lafayette College graduate and current director of business operations at Georgetown University, Charlotte Rath. Charlotte, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. We're excited to have you because you are very familiar with the Patriot League. You are a former Patriot League administrative intern, and now you still work in college athletics. We're talking about celebrating 50 years of Title IX, and you're still involved in sports. So what impact has Title IX had on your life? Yeah, um, so first and foremost, um, Title IX allowed me to be a student athlete at Lafayette. It's allowing all other individuals, specifically females, be uh, student athletes across all Division I, Division II, and Division III. Um, so we wouldn't be here today without that. Um, additionally, I would have to say that um, it's kind of been prominent. My past boss, Sharon Burmell, who's currently still at the athletic department as SWA, has been a huge impact for me. Additionally, our sport admin at Lafayette, Katie McKittrick, at the time she was the SWA. So it's created those types of positions for females to be in the rooms, make big decisions that normally they probably wouldn't have been able to make. And we wouldn't have had that representation. I think personally, I can continue to grow because I see that representation and that opportunity. I mean, it's pushing me towards that goal, but I would have to say first and foremost, uh, what it means the most is that I had that ability to play a sport. You talk about the representation and the women who helped you get to where you are today. How important do you think it is for you now to carry on that torch and help the generation that comes after you? Yeah. Um, I think for me, what's been really, really cool is every single position I've been in, um, the female has been at the forefront of it. Um, I had a head coach that was a female all throughout uh, my college career. Um, going to the Patriot League, I had Jen Heppel, the commissioner, and she's amazing and great. And she pushed me actually to um, go to Georgetown's master's, um, get my master's at Georgetown in sports industry management when I got there. Um, as an intern, I was under Jason Poppy um, for the facilities and operations, but once I got a full-time position at Georgetown in the finance office, Sharon Brumel uh, was my, my go-to for everything Georgetown from the finance perspective. And now uh, transitioning, Georgetown's did a little bit of reorganization and my new direct boss is um, a woman as well, Shana Arthur. So I've been really fortunate enough that in this industry that is so male dominantly focused, uh, I've been able to have the female representation and just no fear in making the decisions that I might need to make that might be tough, but knowing that I have someone having my back and they, they're the same gender as me. A lot of people don't have that. My mom was in a predominantly male industry in compliance and construction and various refinery sites, and she was the only woman in the room. So to have and hear that experience, and while it's not athletics, it's still a male dominated industry. So to have her kind of push me forward has made me realize how fortunate I am to have those females in my life as mentors, as sponsors, if you will, um, pushing me forward in my career. And I would just hope I could do the same. Why I'm still in athletics is because I want student athletes to have a similar experience to myself. And I would just hope that the, the any, whether it's male, female, or whoever, however you identify, um, just be there and represent that person or and, and push them towards to their goal. If it's athletics, great. If it's something, some other industry, I'll try to find a contact for you. Um, so that's kind of the goal behind why I'm still where I am. I think it's really interesting how you mentioned your mom um, being in a male dominated field and now you're in what is used to be a male dominated field and there's that change. So we've seen how far we've come with Title IX. Where do you think we still need to go? Yeah, um, I think obviously there's always room for progress and no matter whatever industry um, or position you're in, I think it's continuing to represent the female population in specifically, let's kind of get granular and say college athletics. We also have the professional sphere where we're making huge strides but kind of how can we specifically focus within the college athletic realm and make sure obviously Title IX within that. So make sure that there's equality in even the little things, um, recognizing what a male sport might be provided. Because I think the other thing too is the education behind Title IX. It's not just because say men's soccer is getting something and women's soccer, it's not. It's 
men's soccer can be provided something, but what other women's sports are missing that it's not just be comparable to women's soccer. So I think that education behind it is, is a huge aspect of we can do a better job of for everyone involved and associated within the university or within the NCAA and understanding what Title IX truly stands for, because I think um, a lot of people get caught up in the, well, the male version gets this, then the female version has to get that. And while that might be correct in, in some spheres, um, there kind of needs to be, be a broader picture of understanding um, the, the true meaning behind um, what Title IX stands for. And I think then that can encompass and put together um, more progress forward. And I think another really great way to progress is educating not only the current generation, but younger generations. So what advice would you give to a little girl who maybe is told she can't do something? How does she overcome that? Yeah, um, I've obviously been told that before. <laughs> so um, I would just obviously be a huge advocate and assess the situation at a whole of uh, what can she not do. Um, and everyone's like, oh, we'll run through the wall, but let's be smart with it. Can we go around it? Can we go above it? Uh, can we go under it? So trying to find those various avenues of how can we shed light on the situation and allow the little girl to still feel ambitious and passionate and still feel like she can conquer the world, but get savvy with it. See how you can go above and beyond and look back on the individual that told you you can't and say, I can because I did X, Y, and Z, as opposed to saying I can, I, I can because I did X. So, so like, I think that's what I've learned most about this industry that I've kind of grown up in so far is you've been told no a lot, but pushing forward and telling that little girl inside of me or the little girl in the future that, that this is hopefully going to touch and, and be a part of their life that even though you're told no, there's many ways um, that you can get someone to say yes. So knowing those ways to find BS. I love that, like the get savvy with it. Um, but Charlotte, <laughs> those, those are all the questions that I have for you. Thank you so much again for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day.